Take a walk around Kutna Hora and discover the history of the town that used to stand just behind the royal city of Prague some centuries ago, town that was called the jewel and the treasury of the country, town whose wealth elevated the Czech kingdom on the pedestal of fame and power. Today, the original atmosphere breathes from every single street, from every house and church. They all represent pieces of history, which put together create an extraordinary picture of the past. The origins of Kutna Hora are usually linked with the development of monetary economy in the 13th century, however, the dawn of mining came a lot earlier. Surface traces of silver ore were probably discovered in the late 10th century by the Slavniks who had small silver coins, dinars, struck at their settlement in Malin, today a part of Kutna Hora. Those coins, produced in 985-995, are circumscribed by, Malin Sivitas. The awareness of silver wealth in the area is sometimes said to have spread along with the founding of the Cistercian Monastery in Sedlik in 1142. The probability of this assumption, however, is reduced by the fact that the monastery had serious financial problems during the first century of its existence, which were solved only after the discovery of silver deposits. After the initial vagueness in historical facts, let's proceed directly to the discovery of local ore deposits. From the technical point of view, silver was discovered by prospectors that systematically surveyed the area of Seskomoraska Verchovina Highlands. The first tangible record of mining and processing of silver ore in the 13th century is a nameless hamlet near Malin, which we have archaeological remains of. Rumors about rich silver deposits attracted new settlers, thousands of which were coming to the area mostly from neighboring German-speaking regions bringing along advanced manufacturing technology and social system and thus becoming the leading group in the entire agglomeration. Immediate surroundings of particular shafts saw the construction of provisional dwellings, wooden chapels and primitive winding equipment. The atmosphere of Kutna Hora at that time may have resembled the atmosphere of American gold miners' settlements. Contemporary records talk about a rush to Kutna and mention the fact that the fame of local mines spread across the border of the country. The first mining settlements emerged without any plans and system and were thus granted no rights. All legal affairs had to be dealt with by the neighboring towns of Kolin and Kaslaw. For quite some time, those settlements were simply called Mons, Mountain or Hill, and the more specific name of Mons Cuthna appeared only in 1289. The position of principal spiritual authority was logically adopted by the Cistercian Monastery in Sedlik that supervised the formation of legal and administration system. The turning point in the town's history came in 1300 when King Wenceslas II, 1278-1305, issued the new Royal Mining Code IUS Regale Montanorum, a legal document of extreme importance that specified all administrative as well as technical terms and conditions necessary for the operation of mines. The new legal position of the agglomeration was supported by a number of privileges granted by kings of the Luxembourg dynasty, which gradually transformed the chaotic cluster of miners' huts into the second most important town of the kingdom. Shortly after 1300, Kutna Hora also became the seat of the central mint of the Czech lands, which was located in a small royal castle later called the Italian court as a remembrance of Italian experts assisting with the planning and application of the minting reform. Mining of silver stood at one end of the manufacturing cycle, striking of silver coins, the so-called Prague Groschen and their parts, Parvi, at the other one. Kutna Hora became the financial center of the country. During the first decades of existence of the town proper, the appearance of Kutna Hora did not correspond to the wealth being generated there. But that situation was to change soon. According to archaeological remains, the foundations of most burger houses were laid in the beginning of the 14th century. Provisional wooden town walls of 1304 were gradually replaced by proper ramparts that had to be extended after some time, since the original layout proved to be too small for the quickly growing agglomeration. Considering medieval standards, the walled-up area was huge indeed, comparable perhaps only to Prague's old town.